FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO Sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. Hey everybody, this is Faux Monday, the snackable companion to FOMO Sapiens. Now we will be back on Thursday with a full episode of the show with Michelle Seeger talking about how to actually create healthy habits and actually stick to them when it comes to diet and exercise. But until then, happy Faux Monday. I'm your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, venture capitalist by day, author and podcaster by night, and of course, FOMO Sapiens 24-7. And today, I have a very special guest, my friend, Justin Crawford. Now, Justin is the chief wellness officer at the House of Routine, the top self-development and wellness brand dedicated to inspiring and helping people to create happier and healthier life through their live wellness events, their weekly podcast, The Routine Project, which I recently did, and their worldwide best-selling journals. Now, Today, we're going to talk with Justin about social wellness, which very much is a great intro to our episode on Thursday. So to kick it off here, I want to welcome you to the show. Welcome, Justin. Thank you, Patrick J. McGinnis. It's good to be here with you, man. Okay. Now, my friend, Justin, who I met so long ago, now running all the things at the House of Routine when it comes to content, you were on a mission to talk about social wellness. And it's important because... The pandemic has been so hard on people. Loneliness is through the roof. Mental health challenges are through the roof. So just to get us started, what is social wellness? I haven't really heard the term before we started talking about it. So explain to everybody what that means. Yeah, of course. I think, and you mentioned like, this is almost like a journey of helping other people discover what it could possibly mean, right? And Mm -hmm. ultimately, when we found out the house of routine that uh, loneliness had doubled, you brought it up after the pandemic, I think a lot of people started recognizing their sense of loneliness. And and, and when you think about social wellness, it's ultimately what relationships are. Uh, It refers to relationships as to how we use them, grow them and build them, interact with other people. And of course, like you can look at that as just being, okay, well, isn't that just being social? But how it pertains to wellness is kind of what we're trying to discover and educate people on now. Uh, And then more importantly, how it affects your mental and physical health is what we started finding a lot about too. You know, it's funny because wellness so traditionally has been like diet and exercise, which we'll be talking about later this week. But I think we've all realized that, you know, mental fitness is a term that we use on the show here a lot of times. It's one of those things that obviously the stigma of those types of things and challenges people have had is starting to go away. But just kind of thinking about your own mental state in the way you would about your physical state, it's this shift that's happening now and it's super important and I'm glad you're talking about it. Let's get into sort of some tips on how do we actually enhance social wellness. So, you know, how do we kind of, when it comes to our work lives or our our sort of personal lives, like what are the things we can do to up the game as it were? Yeah, I love that. Up the ga- up the game of how it pertains to your life too. I mean, the whole point of social wellness is to discover how relationships play into your personal life uh, and professional then, right? A lot of people nowadays in today's world, people want to kind of have the two blend. And if you do want them to separate as well, right? Personal and professional life, or if like you're, you and myself, like our life becomes our work. And if that's most the case for a lot of people, uh, then you want to fully understand how relationships play into that. And then ultimately what self-care even looks like uh, as well. And this can be done simply through analyzing like, number one, what personality type you are, what kind of work ethic you have, what, I mean, really it's just understanding what your personal life looks like overall. And then ultimately allowing people into that relationships into it. Like you and I had person, and I don't wanted to bring this up too today. Like you and I became friends through what had then been me interviewing you, which is our profession. So that's a great example of how social wellness then is the same reason I'm on your show now. Uh, But then I have the confidence to know someone that's a venture capitalist and you have the confidence to know that someone will always say yes to, you know, things that you and I are working on together, but we were friends first having come out of that interview. And I've always told people, I'm like, you can find so many examples in your life where you are utilizing relationships to better cater to how you're going to end up mentally and physically. And the whole physical point comes after, but mentally, if you know that your relationships are good, if you know how you're interacting with people and going about your day-to-day personally and professionally is good, ultimately, then you can go out and realize how the positive mental shift is affecting your body physically. FOMO. So it's really about connectivity, I guess. It's funny, like, 
you know, I think sometimes, again, the word wellness feels like such an internal thing. It's like what's happening on the inside. And obviously being connected does have positive internal aspects, but it's also about thinking about like, okay, I'm navigating through the world, kind of what are the connections that I'm making or where do I need more connection? And as an extrovert, I mean, <laughs> you and I are really extroverted people. I mean, we're, <laughs> I don't even know how either of us has the time like to, to, to talk when the other one is there, you're being well behaved right now. Cause if this were not <laughs> FOMO sapiens, I couldn't get a word edgewise, but as an extrovert, like people just assume that it's easy for me, but you know, it's not necessarily, and it's interesting when we think about the extroverts and the introverts, they have very different ways of handling social interaction and actually then receiving it and then processing it after. So talk about those two personality types, extroverts, introverts, and how they can, mm -hmm. you know, if you're one or the other, how you should think about this topic. And like you said, not only connectivity, but realizing the awareness around both. So then understanding your personality type is the biggest thing I've told folks recently. I'm like, well, you and I as extroverts may understand fully how we like to engage with people, but more importantly, as extroverts, then you have to realize how you decompress, refuel and recharge yourself, which could look very different for both you and I, but even having that cognitive awareness of just what that needs to look like for you is exactly what you need to do. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have introverts, people who don't really like to put out that much energy and be around as many people and that's just a personality type again. And people have always said, well, I'm an ambivert. And you know, you can get on the rabbit hole of different types of personalities. But again, back to what you had mentioned with tips, it's like, I've told folks many, many times recently, just figure out what personality type you have and the one that you even want to create. Some people are like, well, I don't really know. I, sometimes I feel like this, you know, one way and then sometimes I feel another and that's very healthy. Back to wellness, right? This is part of that social wellness journey. I may want to talk to you for the next hour on this podcast and then right after feel for some reason that I need to go decompress and go on a walk for 30 minutes. And again, back to that mind, body, soul, you know, connectivity, that's how then my physical body is probably going to recharge as well. It just so happens that it's connected to the mind refueling after you and I's conversation. Uh, so simply put, I mean, you just really have to understand personality type that you are, the type of people you want to be around, how you want to inter interact with them, and then ultimately how you're going to recharge and then go after it the next day on. Yeah. And you can, one thing you can do, everybody who's listening, if you're, you know, you're kind of thinking like, okay, interesting. I'm not, I mean, maybe, you know, but maybe for some people it's interesting. They, they're not hundred percent certain percent certain because they one day will feel one way or another. Check out the Myers-Briggs test. That's like, I mean, a great way to just get a, a, a rough sense. And then once you get that, what's cool is first of all, um, both of them are great. It's not like being an extrovert is better or worse than being an introvert they're just personality types. It's like, you know, liking blue or liking orange is your favorite color. But one thing that you can also try, which I should, I'm going to try to do this, Justin, and I think maybe you will too, and we'll talk about it in the future, is like, if you're the extrovert, go to a party and just listen. Try mm. the other person's perspective. See what that does for you, because what you might find is that people who are a little quieter, when you give them space, they actually come in and fill that in. Now, I'm terrible at that because I basically just talk and talk and talk. However, I am going to try that because I'm going to some social events this week. And I'm just going to kind of give that a, a little test drive and see what happens. And also, I may find that actually by kind of spending less time on the soapbox, I actually come away from things having learned more, feeling more refreshed, not so exhausted. Because as an extrovert, I'll tell you something like, I have two speeds, 100 and zero. And so I will go to all the events and do all the FOMO things and talk my ears off and your ears off. But then it's like, I just want to stay home and watch Anna Delvey on Netflix for a week. And you know that <laughs> it's too extreme, right? So worth thinking about. Now, I do want to transition. We did talk about loneliness up front, and there's a stat that I have in front of me, which is that according to the Harvard Business Review in Feb 2020, loneliness had doubled since the 1980s, and upward of 40% of Americans have said they feel lonely and isolated one year post-pandemic. Which is terrible. And in fact, somebody told me a, a stat recently that I, and please don't quote me on this, but basically like that the most people, the average number of friends that people have in America is like 1.9, which means that there are a lot of people who don't even have any friends, which is insane. So Justin, knowing that connectivity is so important to social wellness, like how do we combat loneliness? 
I mean, a lot of times there's, you can look at it like you had said, and just recognize that most people are probably in the same boat that you are. And I, I thought of podcasting. I was like, oh my God, FOMO Sapiens is the perfect place to even have this conversation because ultimately, and, and folks who are listening, we all know that we are either going to get or get sucked out of energy through people. We're human mm-hmm. beings by nature. Uh, and to your point about statistics, we've often heard in so many so many times while we're growing up that we're humans, we're creatures, we need to be connected to other humans and creatures. And it's so cool that it's not only going to be human. Some people have dogs for that, right? And so I guess like if you're trying to combat it, you really have to find what's going to make you feel less lonely. It sounds so simple, but ultimately if I think that being friends with Patrick and calling him and taking him to a drink, right, for two hours is going to be plenty of time for me to feel less lonely about certain things, then that's ultimately what I'm going to do. Some people would rather, you know, combat their loneliness by going to a big party, right? Or, um, you know, on the other end of that, some people may want to just be around two people that they consider their only best friends. And then they don't need to see someone for two weeks. And that's just as healthy, but only if it's healthy for you and to you. Back to FOMO, a lot of times people feel like they have to be doing something. They have to go to that party. Ultimately, you're going to feel just as lonely with a thousand people, you know, as you are with one other person or even by yourself, if you really don't want to be at that party to begin with. So again, back to that cognizant, you know, awareness, just understanding first and foremost, what you're going to want to do, not just to receive energy from people, but a lot of times that's how you can combat loneliness. Yeah. You know, step number one, like any problem is just admit it. There's no shame in being lonely. I've had times when I'm lonely. I can be in the middle of a party and feel like the loneliest guy in the world, right? Even though I'm surrounded by people. And so recognizing you're lonely, just like you're recognizing that, oh, maybe I need to, you know, get in shape or I need to find a new job. Like once you sort of accept the state of play, then you can start coming up with the ways that you're going to overcome that. So Listen, this has been a really good conversation, Justin. I'm glad we're talking about it. Everybody, if you like Justin, and I hope you do because he's a fantastic guy, go check out his weekly podcast, The Routine Project. I'm going to tell you something. It's very interesting. I love the way, I mean, now, Justin, I'm just plugging your show, so (laughs) you owe me one. But you, in our interview and the ones I've listened to, it's like, it's so interesting. You get these fascinating guests who talk about their routines on your show. And routine, I mean, I'm a creature of habit, so I love routines. And you may not even realize the routines that you're engaging in. So it's a really fascinating show that everybody can enjoy. So go check it out. And Justin Crawford, thank you so much for being here. This was so great to be with you, Patrick. And I and can disclose, but I call Patrick Patty. So maybe he'll leave that on the podcast. Maybe he uh, won't. <laughs> that's going to get edited out. Thanks again, man. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis.